Coming up on Our World, the link between climate crisis and education. How school systems across the United States are being disrupted by natural disasters. Plus, filling the squeeze, how California tomato farmers are being affected by ongoing drought. And health experts explain why a well-known drug commonly used to treat ADHD is hard to come by. Welcome to Our World, I'm Stephen Walker. In Lee County, Florida, three badly damaged school districts are still closed, weeks after Hurricane Ian passed through the state. The county was one of the hardest hit areas by the storm. As the advocate channel's Rene Marsh explains, this is just one example of how the climate crisis is impacting education. My goodness gracious. Melissa Wright sees the destruction at her 10-year-old son Zane's school for the first time. That's the sign he stands in for the first day of school every year. Fort Myers Beach Elementary is one block from the ocean. Hurricane Ian's powerful winds tore down walls and its storm surge approached the top of the school doors, destroying nearly everything inside. Losing that school is... It's probably what I've cried about the most. It's been more than two weeks and the entire Lee County School District remains shut down. We do have schools that remain in a high needs category, suffering significant damage. He already said this year was tougher for him than most, so I am worried about him falling behind. Lee County schools are emblematic of a growing trend. The climate crisis disrupting school systems nationwide for months and in some cases years. In California, wildfires have been the leading cause of school closures. From 2018 to 2019, a record 2,295 schools closed. Last year in Louisiana, Hurricane Ida, a devastating Category 4 storm, ripped off roofs and destroyed schools. More than a year later, two schools for close to 900 students are still inoperable. And in Tennessee, 17 inches of rain fell in 24 hours, flooding Waverly Elementary and Junior High School. More than a year later, some students are using an auditorium with partitions for classrooms. A government study found that since 2017, more than 300 presidentially declared major disasters have occurred across all 50 states and U.S. territories, with devastating effects on K-12 schools, including trauma and mental health issues, lost in instructional time and financial strain, something Waverly, Tennessee schools know well. After the flood there, students' test scores lagged behind the rest of the state. Some of our, our staff and teachers lost their homes, they lost their loved ones, they lost, uh, you know, and their classrooms. So uh, mentally wise, that has put a toll on them. As schools struggle to recuperate from extreme weather, experts say they must better understand their future risk and rebuild more resilient structures. Our public schools right now, they received a D plus on America's infrastructure report card. Wow. Until then, when extreme weather strikes, all that is lost will undoubtedly also include quality instructional time in school. According to a new poll from the Yale Program on Climate Change Communication, a majority of Americans now believe that the U.S. is facing the consequences of a warming world. California's water crisis is causing problems for tomato farmers in the state, and now inflation is also hurting their bottom line. The Advocate Channel's Stephanie Elam explains. We pick it at the peak of freshness. For 25 years. It's a great product. There's a sense of home to it. Aaron Barcelos has grown tomatoes in California's Central Valley. This year was a below average year for us. But between the crushing three-year drought and the rising cost of growing tomatoes. We're just at the mercy of Mother Nature. Farmers like Barcelos are feeling the squeeze as their margins get sliced and diced. We had a little over 500 acres. We fallowed over 2,000 acres of ground that would normally go to tomatoes. We just did not have the water to go ahead and grow. And during the drought, our water triples and quadruples in price as well. But it's not just water. Due to inflation, farmers are also paying more for fuel and fertilizers, those added costs then reflected in consumer products. There aren't any farmers making any money on uh, tomatoes in California this year, even with, one, with a record price. 
Take a summertime drive on Interstate 5 through the Central Valley, and it's nearly impossible to miss the trucks of tomatoes being hauled straight from harvest to production. 95% of the processed tomato products consumed in the United States come right here from California's Central Valley. As California's tomato growers are at the end of their harvesting season, there just hasn't been enough tons of tomatoes to harvest this year versus last year, which means there's less to go around, which means prices will go up, something that consumers will feel when they go to the grocery store. These are tomatoes that become ingredients in sauces, soups, and salsas. The California Tomato Growers Association said its members produced about 14% less this year than originally intended. What makes this different is this is about our fourth year in a row of having a, a shorter crop than we, what we wanted. Ultimately, it does come down to water. You've grown up in the Central Valley. Is the climate the same as it was when you were growing up? It has definitely changed. We are seeing hotter streaks during the summer, more extremes between cool and, and warm, and, and I don't know what an average year is anymore. Barcelo says tomato crop yields across the state has steadily declined over the last decade. A lot of that is due to the climate change. As for his family's operation, tomatoes may soon be out of the mix. Right now, we don't have any acres scheduled for tomatoes for next year. Unless tomato prices in the field get to a level where we think we have a chance of making money, we're going to go do something else with those open acres. 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue took on a new look over the weekend. Pink lights were cast onto the White House to honour Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Every year in October, breast cancer patients, survivors and research take centre stage. Reducing cancer-related deaths is a key issue for the Biden administration and its Cancer Moonshot initiative. The FDA is warning that there may be a shortage in generic versions of Adderall. The government agency is blaming manufacturing delays. The advocate channel's Mandy Gaither has more on what you should do if you can't fill your prescription. It's used to reduce symptoms of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, but the FDA says some generic versions of Adderall are in short supply. It's the, the most well-established treatment for that by far. Uh, so this could be a significant issue for a lot of kids. The agency's drug shortages webpage shows back orders for several generic forms of the drug are expected to last into March, as well as a back order on one name brand dosage that's expected to resolve this month. The FDA says one of the companies, Teva, is having intermittent manufacturing delays. While other companies continue to produce the drug, there isn't enough to meet demand. If you have trouble filling your prescription, pediatric psychologist Benjamin Fields with Nationwide Children says talk to your doctor. There's other stimulant medications too, and they could they could talk about whether there's options that their medical provider thinks would be appropriate. Uh, and I would certainly have them do that. Field says behavioral health experts can also help kids function with symptoms of ADHD. That may mean changes in things like homework during the shortage. If a medication that they're utilizing to get through that is really essential and not available, maybe we make a call in the short term that we're gonna change some of those demands. In a statement, drug company Teva says we are fully committed to uninterrupted supply and continuing to manufacture and distribute as much product as possible each day. We are working closely with our manufacturing facility and the DEA to see what additional volume we may be able to support in the future. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. The FDA has a drug shortages website dedicated to this issue. The agency says it will continue to monitor supply and help manufacturers to resolve the shortage. Walmart is helping people with hearing problems. The retail giant announced that it will sell over-the-counter hearing aids for the first time in the company's history. These devices can be purchased without a medical exam by a doctor or a prescription. This comes in the aftermath of the Food and Drug Administration's new rules regarding hearing aids. The FDA says their policy change will make hearing aids more accessible to the general public. Officials say they will be available to US shoppers who are at least 18 years old with perceived audio issues. The aids cost between $199 to $999 per pair. Robbie Coltrane, the actor who played the lovable gamekeeper Hagrid in the Harry Potter films, has died. According to his agent, Coltrane passed away on September 14th. No cause of death was given. 
The Scottish-born actor's other credits include the James Bond films Golden Eye and The World Is Not Enough. Coltrane was 72 years old. Thank you for joining us for Our World. The Advocate channel is streaming now on Roku, Fire TV, Apple TV and Android TV. You can also download our app on your Android and Apple devices. Thank you.